right, good afternoon. Um, welcome to today's Lunch and Learn, uh, Medicare's uh, Don't Get Scammed. We have a very small audience today, so um, hopefully we can still provide some good information. I'm more than happy to take questions as we go. I will have a question for the audience at some point. Um, if you're having any problem hearing or seeing me, please type into the chat box and let me know. Otherwise, um, we can go ahead and get started. Okay, there we go. Looks like our, our attendees having some technical difficulties. There we go. All right, so good afternoon. My name is Rama. I'm with the Area Agency on Aging and the Pikes Peak Area Council of Governments. I am the local SHIP and SMP coordinator for a nine county region in Colorado. And today's Lunch and Learn is um, Medicare Don't Get Scammed. So we're going to have a 10 or 15 minute presentation. Um, I've got a short video and uh, a quick question for the audience and then I'll take questions and answers. So again, I am the coordinator for the SHIP, the State Health Insurance Counseling Program and the SMP program, which is the Senior Medicare Patrol. The Senior Medicare Patrol program is designed to help prevent detect and fraud, um, prevent, detect and report fraud and abuse of Medicare, um, help preserve the integrity of the Medicare program, obviously, and we do rely on volunteers to help perform our work and get the word out on how to protect yourself and your friends, family, and community with preventing sure. fraud. Um, let's see. So today we're gonna to talk about Medicare scams. Basically the goal of Medicare scams is to steal your personal information, your Medicare, your social security number, so that they can use that information to make money from the Medicare system using fraudulent means or methods. Some examples of fraud, um, Medicare fraud, billing for services, supplies, or equipment that you never received billing for excessive medical supplies or equipment that, that you never receive, um, obtaining or giving a Medicare number for free services, which aren't always or ever free. Um, Medicare numbers can be used to, uh, uh, to do improper coding when billing Medicare to obtain higher payments, um, provide unneeded or excessive services, to bill for claims that are not medically necessary or they can simply use someone's Medicare number um, by selling it or by letting someone else use it to get services and supplies. Regardless of how someone's Medicare or social security number is used fraudulently, it does impact all aspects and all people. Um, consequences include identity theft. It can impact your health services and obviously it can uh, impact personal financials for people who are victims. And it does affect the Medicare system. Medicare experiences billions of dollars in fraudulent claims that they have improperly paid every year. It puts the Medicare trust fund at risk based on the fact that they spend so much money on fraudulent claims. And it can result in higher premiums Obviously for the beneficiary, it can result in less money for needed benefits, and it can affect the quality of treatment that you receive. I'm gonna play a quick video, um, and I want some participation. I wanna know if you can figure out what part of the call that you're about to listen to should trigger a red flag um, 
if you were to receive this call, it should trigger a red flag for you to be suspicious of the call. Oh, hold on just a sec, that's not working. So I'm gonna play the video. Hello, good morning. This is Sanderson. This is my business manager for the rock is on this. So hopefully you guys were able to hear that or even see that video. If you weren't, please let me know. I could see the video, but not hear it. Not hear it? Nope. Okay. I don't know why that is. I apologize. Let me try it again. I don't know if it's the sound on my computer or what. It's a short video, so I'm going to try it again. Let me know if there's still an issue, and then we'll move on. coming through right Roma all right so I apologize it was a good attempt I guess um I was really hoping that would go through but All right, so we'll skip that part, my apologies. So today we're gonna to talk about primarily um, the different types, some of the most common types of, uh, of fraud that um, you might experience. There are a couple of, of very common types that are happening on a daily basis. I know I get these kinds of calls. I know everybody I know gets these kinds of calls whether it's regarding Medicare, you know, it could be someone saying they're from the IRS, it could be someone saying they're from the police, all kinds of different um, tactics are used. Telephone calls are the most common form of um, scams out there these days. And that's regardless of who they're trying to contact or scam, whether you're on Medicare or, or not. Telephone calls are the most common kind of scam calls you get these days, and spoofing is one of the most common kinds of calls that you may get. Spoofing refers to um, basically caller ID spoofing, and that's when a caller can dis is, tries to disguise themselves as another person or business and tries to trick you into giving your personal information to them, whether it's your Medicare number, your Social Security number, or what have you. Caller ID spoofing. Um, has gotten pretty sophisticated these days. And many times, um, if you look at your caller ID before you pick up the phone, you might see a local phone number, you might see a local business phone number. Um, if it's not Medicare related, it might look like it's from the IRS or from the police or from you know, Medicare directly. 
colors, uh, caller ID spoofing, again, has gotten pretty sophisticated and the scammers who use caller ID spoofing can actually change the phone number that comes up on your caller ID and make it look like pretty much anything or from any entity to try and get you to pick up the phone when actually that caller may not even be in the state or even in the country. So whatever number that comes up on the caller ID is not a guarantee that it's gonna be a legitimate call. The other most common form of scams these days is um, online, whether it's emails or websites or even text messages. These are called phishing scams. Phishing scams, spelled with a PH, basically is the, is the same idea or, or theory as actual phishing. So it's a type of scam where uh, someone impersonates a legitimate organization in order to steal your personal information, whether it's through fake emails or text messages, um, you know, fake websites. The whole, the whole purpose of a, a phishing scam is to throw out the bait, i.e. offer something that you might be interested in or respond to, get you to respond to it, whether it's clicking on a link in an email, whether it's clicking on a link in a text, um, clicking on a website that you are not familiar with. Once they get you to make that click and get into that other, other website or, or online service, then they use whatever you clicked into to reel you in. So the whole point is to get you interested in, in something, get you to try and get more information about it and get you to provide your information in order or in exchange for more information or product or service. These types of scams are a little bit easier to identify usually. Um, Typically, a phishing email is going to be an email that comes from someone you're not familiar with or have never had contact from. Uh, it will have a link in it that doesn't necessarily look like legitimate website address. It may come from an email address that doesn't necessarily look like it comes from the company that the email may be advertising. Text messages, you should be very aware of if you're getting text messages from phone numbers that you don't recognize, um, that has links that they want you to click onto. That's typically going to be a bad idea to click on those links because you did not initiate that, that contact. And the bottom line is, if you are getting emails or phone calls or text messages, from entities that you did not initiate contact from or have had no contact with or have not had no interest in, it's most likely not gonna be a legitimate contact. And you should be very, very wary of ever clicking on anything um, like that. There are some common themes when trying to access Medicare information. The most common theme, which is what I tried to illustrate in the video, was um, attempting to verify information due to an error. So in the video, the caller said that they were calling from a doctor's office and that there had been an error in the billing information and they needed the beneficiary to verify their Medicare number. In that call, the one thing the caller did not do was identify which doctor's office they were calling from. They knew the, the beneficiary's name and they had her phone number and they most likely had her address. But when they, when they made contact with her, they did not identify whose doctor's office they were calling from or anything like that. And that should be clue number one is that they did not identify specifically what doctor's office they were calling from. And because they were trying to verify information, you know, basically, um, implying that they had the incorrect Medicare number. They were trying to get her to give them her Medicare number by verifying it. A legitimate call in that situation would not only identify the specific doctor's office they were calling from, 
but they would provide you with the Medicare number for you to verify instead of asking you to give it to them without them having it. Those are just a couple of, of red flags that should go up when you receive such calls. Other types of calls that might be common, um, calls trying to offer you free products or services, such as genetic testing with the COVID um, pandemic, COVID testing calls were pretty common. There have been calls that are claiming that you're entitled to a refund by Medicare or you know, a change in billing practices or a change in billing rules. Um, the provider was over, overpaid and they need to issue you a refund directly. Unfortunately, that would never happen. If Medicare overpaid a provider, Medicare would, re would um, get the refund from the provider directly. Another common one was telling you you needed to update or replace your Medicare card. This has become less common in the last year or so, but it was pretty common a couple of years ago when Medicare um, issued new Medicare ID cards that no longer included your social security numbers. Anytime you're getting a call or a contact that is trying to give you something for nothing, as the old, ad, as the old adage says, you can't get something for nothing if it sounds too good to be true. All of those, all of those, you know, added, uh, all of those things from, from over the years, they all still apply. They're all accurate, they're all true, and they should all come to mind whenever you're getting a call or an email or a text that you're not sure of. The SMP program is here to help you not only understand and educate, but we're also here to help you learn how to protect yourself, what steps you can take to um, detect suspicious calls or contacts, and how to report these kinds of calls or contacts. So things you can do to protect yourself and your friends, neighbors, family, always, always do treat your Medicare card like a, like a credit card. Protect that information the same way you would protect the credit card number so that it doesn't get out there in the public. Always be suspicious of calls from phone numbers you don't recognize. I used to say caller ID was the best thing ever invented. And if I don't recognize a number, I don't answer the phone. If it's important, they'll leave a message. With, with spoofing calls becoming more common and phone numbers are no longer you're no longer able to rely on what comes up on caller ID necessarily to, to be able to tell who's legit and who's not. I still, I still say, if it's important, they'll leave a message. So if I don't recognize the number, I don't answer the phone. And if it is important, they will leave a message and you can call them back. If you do answer the phone and they're asking you for information, don't be afraid to ask questions. Ask more specific questions. What exactly, who is, which doctor exactly are you calling from? What specific company you're calling from? What specific date of service are you calling about? Or what specific product are you calling about? Typically, even though the callers may have your name and phone number and, and date of birth and address and all that good stuff, if you ask more specific questions about why they're calling, the likelihood of them simply hanging up on you because they don't have those answers is pretty good. And that would be a clear sign that that wasn't a legitimate call. And Medicare, Medicare never calls. They never come to your house. They never try and sell you anything. <coughs> so anybody who is calling and identifying themselves as being from Medicare or someone who is contracted with Medicare isn't likely not gonna be legitimate because Medicare doesn't do that. Always, always be cautious of anything being offered to you for free, but in exchange for a Medicare number. And don't be afraid to share this information. I mean, the more people who know, the better off we all are, the better the Medicare system works and the less likely other people will be scammed. Things you shouldn't do, obviously don't give out your Medicare number anybody who doesn't need it. 
if your doctor's office truly has the wrong Medicare number, they transposed a letter or a number, they will make sure <clears throat> that they will get that information from you the next time you go for an office visit. Or they will ask, or they will simply usually just send you a bill and you end up calling them to verify your Medicare number. Don't be afraid if you're not sure of the caller, if you're not willing or able to ask the questions that you wanted, <clears throat> that I suggested you ask to try and verify that that caller is legitimate. Don't be afraid to tell the caller you can't talk right now and you have to call them back. Ask them for a direct phone number to call them back. Typically they'll give it to you if you're not asking more questions than that. And they'll give you a direct phone number. The benefit of getting that information from them is that if you can provide a direct phone number, if you report this call to either the state Colorado, um, you know, the, the uh, Federal Trade Commission, if you have that direct phone number to provide when you're reporting a fraudulent call, that significantly increases the ability for that government entity to find that caller and to follow up and uh, catch that caller or that fraudulent entity. And when all else fails, don't be afraid to hang up. If you're not comfortable with who you're talking to, you're not sure they're legitimate, you don't really feel like messing with asking them questions or getting more information, just hang up. There's no harm in hanging up if it truly is important or legitimate, they'll call back or they'll send you something in the mail. But if you're not sure, just hang up. It's okay to just hang up. And then please don't be afraid to report these calls. Reporting these calls is how these, these scammers get caught. Plain and simple. If people don't report these calls, the government has no way to catch them, has no way to recoup monies, has no way to help refund any monies that you have you may have um, spent on things that were not legitimate. Don't be afraid to report these calls or emails or texts or, or anything like that. Another way to keep, um, keep yourself protected is to keep track of your appointments, your providers, your services, and the dates. Look at your Medicare summary notices or explanations of benefits from your insurance. Medicare obviously always encourages people to create a My Medicare account on the Medicare.gov website, where you can also look at your Medicare summary notices and, and see what services are being billed to Medicare um, for how much and verify that you actually receive those services or products on the dates that they were provided. Verifying and double checking that whatever is being billed Medicare on your behalf is actually something that you receive because Medicare is never billed until after the fact, after the service is received, is a great way to make sure that your information is not being used fraudulently by somebody else. And then of course, report, report, report. If you have that phone call and they're trying to get you to verify your Medicare number. Again, if you can, if you can tell them, you know, I'm not available right now, can I call you right back and get a phone number from them and report that information to either us, your local SP office. You can call the state SP hotline. You can call the Federal Trade Commission or go to their website and report um, a fraudulent call. If you can provide that contact number that they gave you to call them back, that significantly increases the likelihood that that scammer will be caught. So the more information you can get about that fraudulent call without giving them any information, the more likely they will be caught if you report that information. Our office, um, which is the local s &P, serves nine counties in Colorado. I've listed the counties. There are local phone numbers listed, as well, again, as the statewide toll-free hotline for SMP. You can report these, these contacts anonymously. You can file a complaint um, with your contact information. 
your calls are always followed up on. These complaints are always followed up on, whether anybody knows it or not, or believes it or not, the government does follow up on every single one of these complaints and is very serious about tracking these scammers down and catching them. And that's about it for today. Um, certainly I am open to suggestions for other topics on fraud and abuse, on scams in general. Again, I'm with the Area Agency on Aging through the Pikes Peak Area Council of Governments. I am the SHIP, the State Health Insurance Counseling Program, which um, provides education and information on all things Medicare, and the SMP, the Senior Medicare Patrol, that um, helps educate and assist people in fraud and abuse situations. Our contact information is available here. I am open to taking any questions if anybody has any. If you do have questions, you can either type in the chat box or unmute and simply ask a question. I will be happy to email these slides to um, attendees today if you are interested. So I do have a question. How do you report a text message? So a text, yeah, message, one. Yeah. So a text message would be the same thing as reporting um, a telephone call. Text message actually already provides you with contact information. You report that either to the SNP or to the Federal Trade Commission, simply providing the, the caller ID text, text contact info. Um, you can take a, a, a snapshot of that actual text and include it in an email if you send it um, to one of those entities or simply write that contact information down. But that's the beauty of text messages is that it already provides you with that contact info that who that text is coming from. So it makes it easier to report quite honestly. So if they give you a website, if they give you a they give you a website, they're referring to a website in that text. Hey, contact me at yada, 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 yada for a good time or whatever, which basically that's what they're doing is contact me for this for a good time. And it's it's a bad vibe. Yeah. The number that it's coming through on is all I would need to report. Probably, yeah. I mean, you'd, you'd probably want to um, include the the thing they want you to click on, the site they want you to click on, that address. And so give that to the Colorado number that you said, that 5800-503-5190, just call them and give them that info? You can do that. Or you can um, contact the Federal Trade um, Commission, and I provide that information in the slides if you want me to send them. I just didn't have time to get that information thrown into this presentation, but I will, I will have it added out. The next yeah, yeah that, that would be great to get that. Thank you. But yeah, um, if you call the, the toll free statewide number, that goes directly to the Department of Insurance up in Denver. So you can report that. And at the very least, they'll forward that to the Federal Trade Commission. Okay, because if it, what if it's not insurance related? I mean, what if it's just a, a bad vibe? What, what if it's not insurance related? Yeah. And any kind of other kinds of scams or or spoof or because I mean Medicare is just a drop in the bucket as far as all the different kinds of scams and and well exactly exactly out there. so I mean the Federal Trade Commission will take them all S and P is going to be more focused on Medicare related or Medicaid related uh, issues but if you report something to the S P that 800 number at the Division of Insurance they can forward it to the Federal Trade Commission. But again, I can include that information um, in the slides if you would like me to email them to you. Okay, yeah, that'd be great for the Federal Trade Absolutely. Commission. Absolutely. Thank you. So this presentation was recorded and it will be available to view on our website um, in the next couple of days. 
as well as any slides that I do end up emailing to people. They'll be available for download when this uh, recording is posted. If you have any other questions or concerns, if you are not sure, if you have a legitimate concern, whether it's uh, a billing issue for Medicare services, whether it's a call, a text, you know, an email, any kind of questions or concerns you may have about um, your Medicare related services or supplies, you are welcome to call your local SMP office at, a, at the number provided, the 635-4891. We are here to help, we are here to educate, we are here to provide um, assistance in, in dealing with any of those issues and helping you report or file any um, reports for any of these issues. So anytime you have a question or you're simply not sure, you're welcome to call us and we'll help walk you through it and help you um, figure out what your next step would be. All right, well, I do appreciate you guys attending today. Um, again, please call us if you have any questions or concerns we might be able to help with. Hopefully I will um, see some of you at the next Lunch and Learn, which will be, I believe in um, July, August, September, and it will be geared towards Medicare open enrollment because that will be just before open enrollment starts for Medicare. Otherwise, if, um, if I don't have any other questions, thank you for coming and I'll let you go for this afternoon.